In a world where streaming companies are desperate for content. I'd do anything for you. I'd pay. Where they will literally make a show out of anything. She did not look anything like her picture at all. <gasps> That's your estate story? Someone asked me to pee on them. Even a card game that was popular nearly 10 years ago. This summer, get ready to lose your last brain cell with Exploding Kittens, the show. Hello, yes, I'm God. Please kiss my feet. Yep, this exists. As I mentioned before, at the beginning of this month, I was hit with a bad case of the illness. And being confined to my room for nearly two weeks, I found myself watching questionable things. No, not that. I may have been delirious, but I wasn't that delusional. But I did watch many things that I probably never would have. And since there was nothing good coming out in theaters this weekend, I thought I would review one of the oddest things I watched this month. Netflix's new original show, Exploding Kittens. Exploding Kittens? You mean the popular card game from 2015? Yup. How could they possibly make a show out of that? Good question. Netflix? Gotta get home for family game night. Barf. Between the emails and the Zoom calls, like, hey, where's the calendar invite for living my life? I, for one, probably wouldn't have combined the swallowing orifice with the breathing orifice. Oh, great. The orifice police are here. They're ponies with face boners. I did you a favor. Okay, I knew it was game night, so I got Kegernay Sauvignon. Every word you speak is like a dagger made of Benadryl. This show is the epitome of out of touch exec goes, what was once popular that has a fan base that we can exploit? Well, Exploding Kittens was super popular like 10 years ago. Perfect, make it into a show. Okay. And unsurprisingly, this show is not good. This is what happens when you take something that was once popular and try to force it to be something it's not in hopes of exploiting its original fan base. Hey, I got an idea. How about we try coming up with new and interesting stories and make shows and movies out of those? Nah, let's just keep making filler garbage to cram into our platforms. And that ultimately is what the show is. Just content for the sake of content. Because Netflix, along with every other streaming service, is in a constant race to continuously produce more and more content in a sad, feeble attempt to keep up with the content-producing juggernaut, YouTube, who is slowly but surely taking over the entire media landscape. The best way I can describe this show is it's a compilation of random, whiny, millennial cringe humor. And it's just plain boring because it's clear they had no real direction. And I'm a fan of the art style and animation. Hell, I was a fan of the original card game. But the show is just empty and devoid of any real reason for existing. So for my highbrow critic score, I give Exploding Kittens a 4 out of 10. And for my schmo score, the score for the average Joe Schmo, I give it a 1 out of 10. Now, this is the part where I usually say, if you want to watch the show, spoiler free, leave. But there's nothing really to spoil here because nothing really happens. So the premise of the show is this. God is a narcissistic deadbeat loser who is bad at his job. And because he is bad, he gets banished to Earth by a council of highly diverse creatures. How do these creatures have the power to overthrow a god that literally created them? Don't think about it. You'll only hurt yourself. So they banish God to Earth, where he becomes a cat. Why? Don't worry about it. And in order to get back to heaven, or 
to be God again. I, I don't really know what his motivations are. God has to answer the prayers of some random family. But why? I thought I said, stop thinking about it. And from there, they're basically doing a 100 good deeds for Eddie McDowd situation. Only somehow stupider? Because God still has some of his powers, but they are random and never really defined. They basically only exist as convenient plot devices for one episode, and then they are never mentioned or used again. Oh, and then there's some devil character, but she isn't the devil, she's Beelzebub, who is supposed to be the new devil? Don't think about it. Who is also bad at her job, so a council of demons decides to banish Bubsies to the earth too. Because they liked the punishment the other council did to God, but instead, Bubsies has to learn how to be more evil before she's allowed back into hell. And then the two kind of clash and fight with each other sometimes for no real reason, actually. And that's it. That's the premise of the show. Now, this show is supposed to be a comedy, but its humor really boils down to two things. The main one being mock Christianity by making God a narcissistic loser that is horrible. Which is fine. I'm a firm believer that you can make fun of anything if you do it right. But when that one joke is the base of your whole entire show and fills every single episode, it gets so old real quick. Who here prayed for help to save this family? We don't pray in this family. We catch prey. One of you prayed for my help. Stop saying that. Nobody prayed. This isn't Utah. <sighs> it's like, we get it. You clearly grew up in America where Christianity is the framework for its society, so you hate Christianity and all God-related things. Okay, can you tell another joke now? And the second thing this show's humor revolves around is just pointing out messed up things in the world. That's it. No punchline. Just, isn't this awful? It's like, yeah, I live in this world too. I can see all the messed up things in it. I don't really need a show that just points them out and then does nothing with it. That's why I gave the show such a low schmo score, because I wouldn't even recommend the show as background noise. It's really just one big downer. Hey, you want to watch a show that'll drain you of all your joy? No, why would I want that? This is what happens when people who aren't experienced comedic writers try to write a comedy. Like I said though, this show was just made to fill space on Netflix. And it really shows with its lack of creativity, comedic failures, and no real direction. So, in the end, I really can't recommend this show, even if you are a fan of the card game. Anyways, thanks for being here. I appreciate you, and I'll catch you at the next one.